Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Thursday. I hope the volume is all right. I'm here in uh, Mr. Caniff's room. Some beautiful icons. You can see some of the traffic there. There's a little bit of emotion out on uh, Margin Street this morning. Uh, lovely weather out there. I, I wonder how the barometric pressure or the uh, family stress level is uh, where you are this morning. I hope that you're doing all right. Uh, hey, you made it through a long Tuesday of all online classes, so congratulations to you for doing that. If you're bright and early tuning in live, uh, happy Thursday. And if you're going to tune in later, I hope this helps you get through the day. Uh, I will say, you know, if, if, if you're feeling a bit uneasy or a bit unsure these days, um, that's really normal. That's really natural for those of us as uh, adults. Uh, this is an unprecedented time. You know, uh, we've never seen anything like it. And so um, the fact that all of us are a bit, uh, I don't know, unsettled, that's really understandable. Uh, just as a data point, you know, uh, on Sunday in Essex County, Sunday released the just, uh, statistics uh, about four o'clock every day. On Sunday, there were 400, 570 cases in Essex County. And as of yesterday, that number had risen to 885. So, you know, it's, well, you all watch the news. Uh, today marks the 15th anniversary of the death of Pope John Paul II. For those of us who were around that time, it doesn't seem like that long ago. Born in Poland in 1920, Karol Joseph Wojtyla knew suffering. He lost his mother when he was nine, his older brother when he was 12, and his father when he was 21. Like many of you young people at Bishop Fenwick, he was an athlete and an artist and a scholar, and he was a person of deep faith. As a priest, he grew in popularity, particularly in Poland, by supporting the Solidarity Movement. And his legacy as a bishop and later as pope is, is beyond telling. He was later canonized by the church. Uh, some characterize him as theologically conservative, others as socially progressive. I don't know. I'm not sure if any of those labels really capture him. The thing that's most relevant to me is that young people loved him. Young people loved him. And one of the reasons they loved him was because he continually spoke about God's mercy. So we pray for that mercy today, and we include in our prayer this morning the petitions that you have already submitted to our website, petitions that are close to the hearts of all of us in the Fenwick family. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, we ask you to watch over all of us and each of us this day. We ask for a special blessing for Principal Maureen Kelleher, that she may rest in peace with you. We pray for the brother of one of our faculty members who was undergoing major surgery today. And we pray also for the friend of one of our students who has had cancer relapse for the fourth time in her young life. Let us be encouraged by the words of St. John Paul II who wrote, there is nothing more we need than divine mercy. That love which is benevolent, which is compassionate, which raises us above our weakness to the infinite heights of the holiness of God. Apart from the mercy of God, there is no other source of hope for humankind. May we know and experience, may we share and reveal that divine mercy this day. We ask this each in his and her own way. I would ask it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, a couple of quotes to share with you from uh, Pope John Paul II, and then, like I couldn't help myself, I have to do a little something from yesterday. So, uh, a few quotes. These were messages particularly directed towards young people. And I'll just read there just five short ones. Hopefully they resonate. Do not be afraid. Do not be satisfied with mediocrity. Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. We are not the sum of our weaknesses and failures. We are the sum of God's love for us. 
and our real capacity to become the image of his son. It is Jesus who stirs in you the desire to do something great with your lives, the will to follow an ideal, the refusal to allow yourselves to be ground down by mediocrity, the courage to commit yourselves humbly and patiently to improving yourselves and society, making the world more human and more fraternal. Remember that you are never alone. Christ is with you on your journey every day of your lives. And finally, he said, I plead with you, never ever give up hope. Never doubt, never tire, and never become discouraged. Be not afraid. I hope you enjoy those from uh, St. John Paul II. What a remarkable uh, figure and person of faith. Uh, tomorrow morning, and I've started to share these on social media, we'll be announcing the uh, winter sports uh, uh, student athletes who have been recognized by the Salem News. Uh, I started tweeting about that yesterday. You'll hear more about that tomorrow morning. Uh, for today, I mean, did you like yesterday? Did you like the name thing? Like, I, in the middle of the night, three more came to me. So I'm going to leave you with these I couldn't resist. We tried to find this person, but couldn't see through the trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. Miss Forrest. Forrest through the trees. You got to work hard for this one. You got to work hard for this one. No, this person is not a lead singer for a church service. No, this person is not a lead singer for a church service. Think about where I am. A lead singer for a church service would be, of course, a can't or can't or. And this person is Mr. Can If. <laughs> if uh, yeah. uh, and finally, this person is taking up a new hobby today, bowling. Ah, uh, Ms. Lane. If bowling, yeah. Okay. Uh, on a more serious note, please continue to submit your prayer requests via our website. Our shared prayer is so important, particularly during this uh, difficult time. Send me your droplets of joy and have a joyful day. Take care, family.